Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to be showing you all how to make this hand here. Uh, so I hope you guys will enjoy this little bit of a video here. Now I'm not going to be making this very specific hand. Uh, this was actually made in conjunction with a little miniature Thor hammer that I had made. It was for a client that it just didn't work out for the client, so I went ahead and made a different, a different kind of stand for the client for the little Thor hammer deal. But it's still a pretty neat little project. So the only thing I'm covering today is actually forging the hand itself. And what I'm going to be doing is turning it into a pointer finger. So, if you'll bear with me here, I will find a piece of chalk. If you give me one second here. Find a piece of chalk way over here. All right. So the starting material sizes for this, we're going to start with a piece. The length does not matter. Then let me zoom you out here just a little bit. You give me a second. Let's zoom you out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so the starting stock size is going to be one inch or 25 mil. Uh, can't see that at all, can you? Okay, sorry my British friends. Let's pull that back out a little bit. It'll be one inch or 25 mil and the so wide and it's going to be quarter inch or six mil thick so we're going to start with that first and then what we're going to do is we're going to isolate off a mass that is roughly a cube of material and when I mean a cube of material I mean a box section that is one inch by one inch by one inch okay so we're going to segregate that off and draw down our wrist or our arm portion of it and then this portion right in here is going to become our hand. Now later on we will actually come back through and we will cut in the fingers to this hand. So we'll have something that looks approximately like this on the end and then we will do the net, do the job of cutting in the individual fingers and thumb of the hand. And then we'll spread them out, work it out to where it actually looks like a little hand. So I hope you guys will see that. So we'll work on these. There's a little bit of a trick of how that has to work. We'll zoom it in here real nice and close for you. But you can see right there how this is going to have to work here. We are going to have to work on that little thumb. That actually has to be a little side protrusion. And so you guys can see kind of how the palm works there. And that's exactly what we're going to work on. Doing like that from a piece of quarter by one inch flat stock or 25 mil by 6 mil flat stock. Leave it on a long bar so this way it's easier to work the end. You don't have to mess around with a pair of tongs while you're working on it and that's the best way to take and do it. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to hang off the horn about an inch of material. You hit it on each side equally and work right up into that curve. If you notice, I'm laying it flat each time. Just try to keep that nice and even as we draw this down. All right, so there we go. We've got our first bit there. Now we've got approximately, like I said, we've got about approximately one inch cube or 25 mil for those across the pond. And that's what we're looking at. So I'm going to stop hitting it there before it gets too cold. I'll measure with this. My ruler's in inches. Voila one inch or 25 mil before the start of your curve. Now we want to leave that there. Later we'll come in and refine around it 
a little bit better. Uh, but we want this to have a little bit of a smooth transition right now. Now we're just going to work at drawing out the rest of the stock. All right, take a good high heat. And just start drawing this down. There we have it. Little extra length, and we will continue to draw this down. I'll be back with you guys after a little bit once I've got this drawn down to the length I want. Okie doke everyone, so in that last little clip there, that little b-roll there, I was essentially just rounding this up on the horn. Now I'm going to have to do a little more rounding with that up here towards the edge, but this is where I just talked about how we're going to probably start reforming our little hand area. And this is how we're going to start doing that, is right in here. Okay, so this is the ideal. I'm just going to try to get this all nice and cleaned up. Don't worry about it at this point that's twisting and getting out of sorts. You can always round that up a little bit later. We'll give this a good brush in here. Just like so. Boom. All right, so we got a pretty good clean here. I'm not going for perfection on the stem portion. You can obviously forge on this as round as you like. The ideal was just to create this little foot pad at the end here. So now that we got this little foot pad at the end, we'll let this cool and we'll go over to the workbench and we'll go ahead and draw out our fingers or essentially what looks like a hand on the end of this. And then we can actually start prying out the fingers and working on those, the part that actually makes this a hand. Later on, we'll take the rest of this and turn it into, we will turn the rest of this into a handle. And the reason why is I'm making myself a little bit of a pointer finger. Okay, everyone. So here we got this piece. I've got it all laid out here. This is how we're going to end up cutting the hand out of this piece. Now, the thumb is your shortest finger, so we have got to make sure, and I can't show you in here, but this is the pattern. Just look at your own fingers and cut that pattern out of your blank, okay? Just remember, keep the thumb like this because we're gonna have to split it out of the piece, okay? So if you look at what I drawn here, 
I drew a smaller line here that's going to get knobbed off and be the pointer finger or be the pinky finger. A line and then another line. So once again you want to draw in enough space for four fingers. So there's four. So you're going to make three cuts and then the fourth cut is going to become the thumb. So there's one line, okay, there's two lines, three lines, four lines, and then that's the cut off for the thumb. So once you get this completely cut off here, once you get your lines cut with a band saw, you can do this with a chisel if you want to take and wing it there. You do have to dress up the chisel cuts. I'm going to use the band saw for this. But then you want to cut off all the excess material that you don't need in between the pieces. This will help form out that hand a lot quicker and a lot easier. So without further ado, let's get over the bandsaw and let's get cutting this out. Okie doke everyone, so here we go. We're going to get this locked up in the vise here. Hopefully everybody can see that just fine. It's got a nice bright color temperature to it. We're going to start with the pinky and we're going to just drive a slitting chisel down between these. This is the ideal here. We just want to take and drive these and get them sprawled out here. This is really the main goal. Go down here to the thumb get that all sprawled out. We want to deepen the cut slightly so that we remove some of that cut work ideal. Some of the saw cut look out of it. And just take your time with this and get this all sprawled out here. I don't know if you guys can see that okay. I hope you can. Again, we just want to get these kind of sprawled out from one another and dress up the bottom of the saw cut with more of a cut like that. So I don't know if anybody can see that okay. Hopefully you can. If you can't, I apologize. But there you are. That's what we were wanting to go with. And now we got all our fingers kind of sprawled out. Now we can start working on them a little bit at a time individually. Now while this is hot and we're going to stay close by the fire, we're going to work at peeling out these individual fingers using a pair of scrolling tongs. Now the reason why we've got to peel these out, starting with the thumb and the pinky so far first, is because we have to provide enough space for us to actually get in there and start forming those, okay? So we've got to get those out of the way far enough 
that we can actually start forming these on the hand themselves. And the best way to do that is to stay right here at the fire where it's close and handy. And then pry your fingers around where you provide yourself enough space to work on these individual fingers. Now this is where a nice small little steak hardy would come in great handy to be able to get in between all these little fingers and stuff. And that's what we need to, uh, it would be great to have something like that. I do not at the time of shooting this video. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll show you how to do it at the anvil and things like that once we get some fingers bent around and into the right orientations. Uh, but, you know, the ideal of it is to be able to, like I said, get each one of these individual fingers to a point that you can work on them. That's the big deal. Getting each individual finger out to a point that you can actually do some forging on these things. And you're going to have to give yourself some courtesy bends. And this thing's going to look all crazy and whatnot. But it's necessary to get in at all these individual fingers. So you bend one finger one way, you bend the other finger the opposite way. Good thing this isn't a real human hand because that would really suck. So now I'll go ahead and go over to the anvil and it's just a constant process of this, bending them out and then working them little by little. Okay, we're going to work on this first finger, which is the pinky. And we're going to just work it with a much smaller hammer. And all we're trying to do is take off the corners and round it up a little bit. Give it some little bit of shape and dimension. You have to take your time with this. Like I said, take it as many heats as you need to to get that rounded off. And just keep working each finger on the anvil like that as you give yourself some more courtesy bits. Okay, get some more heat in this. This is also a good point to point out if you have a set of torches. This is a lovely job for torches. So get this good spot again. I'll just shoot raw straight through this for a minute. I'll get these good hot and pull out each one of the fingers to be worked on pretty much. Now remember, fingers are not actually round. Fingers are pretty much an ovular shape. So that's something to keep in mind as you're shaping the fing individual fingers. These are not round fingers. So you may have to bump out a finger a little bit more one of the others to access it and be able to hammer on it. So we'll get that hot again and keep working these out one by one. So I'm going to take another good heat. As you can see it does not take very long at all for these actual fingers to get hot heated up. So watch them at this point because you can end up burning. Ooh. Now I'm just working on whatever fingers out there. There's no real particular order I'm shooting for one or the other on. Once again, it's just whichever one I can access. You can always add detail later and get as technical as you like with these. I'm not going for realism. I'm just going for done. So now you guys can start seeing some of those fingers come together there. So there's the what would be middle finger done. Now I'm going to try to get in here and work out this uh, ring finger a little bit. So I might bend it the opposite way and try to hammer it out. Or I might just go ahead and work on the actual pointer finger first because it seems like I can get that one right now. Once you get two fingers done right next to side one another and you've got a reasonable 
degree of uh, completion of two fingers right next side one another, you can bend them, you can bend them right back into place like they would be in the normal hand position. Something similar to looking like that. So while you're working on these, say this, these two fingers are done, put them together, bend them back straight, so this way you can work on these fingers here. Keep these at a high heat while you're working on them so to avoid stress cracking. Get this good done. All right. So it looks like I can get this finger here done. Once again, I'm just trying to remove the squareness of the corners off this thing. That's the main goal here right now at this point in time. If I can get the squareness of the fingers off, and get it rounded up, I'll be a happy man. But now I need to work this thumb out. Remember, do not forge your thumb too thin, because thumbs are meant to be fat. They're your fattest finger. Oh, as you can see, this is starting to look kind of crazy. The ideal is to bend all the fingers as far out of the way as you can get them in order to put them back together. So once again, on a much larger hand, you can probably add a lot more detail or if you want to take your take a whole lot of time and spend crafting this hand, you can. It's really up to you. Let me get this. Still working at this here. Get all these fingers good and hot. I'll work on this thumb some more. I'll make sure that that's pointed down in the fire. Get hot fire going. Do what we do. Okay. So now we'll come out with that thumb again. And I'm just going to try to once again draw it out just a little. But really, my main focus is to try to make the thing round. So, putting that up on the edge there. Be careful of getting too many sharp edges on it and whatnot. Yeah. And so these are actually coming out quite well. I'm pretty happy with it so far. Now, as an added benefit, so say you don't like some of the roughness, you can smooth all this up with a bit of sandpaper before you bend them back. And I'll probably do that off camera and then we'll bend all these back up into place. Or you can smooth them all up with a file as well. Oh, but the last finger I gotta work on is the ring finger. So I have that is the last one I gotta work on right there. So I'm gonna work on that one next. Okay, you guys get pretty much the ideal. I'll be right back with you after I get that one forged. Okay, everybody, so here we are. So now we got all our fingers mostly rounded up. Now, what I'm going to do here, as you can see, this hand looks kind of crazy and all over the place. That's okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm gonna actually come back in here and I'm gonna clean out all those little areas down in the base of the fingers with a file, a smaller file. I'll let it cool down to a little bit and then come in with a small file and clean out all those areas. And then I'll take a piece of sandpaper that is stripped off. I won't make you guys have to watch all this, but I will take a piece of sandpaper that's stripped off and then sand in between all the fingers and get everything smoothed up the way I want it before I bend all the fingers back into position. Okay? So that's the next step. I will be right back with you and we'll bend all these back into place after I get that portion done. Here we are ladies and gents. Now we've got this all filed up smoothly and cleaned up with a little bit of a touch of sandpaper. Now we're going to go ahead and bend the hand back into its normal and natural position. When we do that we'll be able to check its, its dimensions and make sure we're happy with it. It doesn't have, you can make it as critical as you like. This is going to be essentially a pointer finger. 
uh, in demonstrations that I'm going to be doing. And so, I mean, it's really more of a gag than anything, so it's not really that critical for me. I'm just going to use it as a pointer finger. So let me go ahead and get this good and hot again. And then we will go ahead and form it. So one of the last things that we will have to do is we will have to put in the palm of the hand. And that will be done with a little bit of a radius hammer. You can use a hammer that has a essentially like a rounding hammer. You can use a ball peen or you can use a hand fuller to get this accomplished. Uh, you know, depending on how large or small the hand is. Now, if you want to go for realism, you might even cut in some palm lines, like you see on my palm there, like the regular hand. Basically, after you get this main shape, sky's the limit, and you're only limited by your creativity. We'll get these good and hot, and then we'll go ahead and just knock them right on around. Now, for this, I'm not going to use just a regular hammer. I'm going to use a rawhide mallet to get these kind of laying flat and back together a little bit. And then I will also use a pair of scrolling tongs. At this point, I've got to put all this effort into cleaning out a lot of the hammer marks, so I don't want to put those back in. So first things first, I'm going to get the hand all laying flat in one position, just like so. And that's what the rawhide mallet's for. And then once those are all flat, then we do our tweaking with our scrolling tongs. Be careful with this. You are at the stage right now that if you do things where you let it get too cold, you can end up cracking something off. So be very careful when you're doing this to get your thumbs back right. So there's the thumb sticking out. There's the hand coming together. Now I'm going to go ahead and take another heat on this and we'll do it again. I decided instead of clipping out and clipping in and having about four dozen clips, I figured I'd just shoot this straight through as it does not take that long to heat these up. Let's go ahead and get this good hot again. I'm working in a coal forge. Like that, we're going to use the scrolling pliers here. Hopefully this whole thing is in shot. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and tweak the thumb back into place a little bit. We want people to still be able to tell that this is from a distance that this is a hand that you created, okay? So you don't want to go too far with this to where you just try to straighten it out too much, okay? We want it to still be able to be told considered a hand when it's all said and done. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up some of the scale off of here. You guys can see how that's all come together. You want to leave a little bit of space in between the fingers. Like I said, just to give it a little bit of gappage so that way people can tell that it's a hand. So there we are. Almost like it. It could be a little more proportionately correct, but uh, it's good enough for what we're doing with it. So now I'm going to go ahead and get it heated again, and we'll curl the fingers over the horn of the anvil. And that will actually be after I take that back. We're going to go ahead and work out the palm a little bit, decide which side is going to be the palm. I think I'll make that side the palm. And we'll go ahead and put in some lines and things first. I'll go ahead and grab a little chisel. Use a slightly heavier hammer than what I got here. I'll just go ahead and put in some palm lines. Just for fun. But I'm also going to round it first in the palm of the hand. We want a little shallow depression. So to do that, I'm going to use a ball peen at this stage. And I'm just going to hammer straight down the center to kind of give our hand just a little bit 
of dimension. That, that bit of that cupping action that you're used to seeing. Like right around the thumb and whatnot. And I'm going to work that down into a cooler temperature. Just so this way I can have that Plainish that off really good. I might come in with the rounding hammer at this colder temperature. Plainish that off just a little better. And work that palm out. It's not much of a difference, but I don't know if you guys can see that concavity there. It gives it just a little more realism. Now we'll heat it up again and we'll put some palm lines in it. I like the work to look very elaborate as you get up. So I like it to catch your eye at first and then continue to catch your eye as you get closer and closer to it. I really like my work to get that. So, you know, as you're at a distance, it catches your eye. You get a little closer, you see a little more detail, a little closer and a little closer and a little closer, and you keep seeing more and more detail. I really like that aspect of blacksmithing. And you can do it so easily. So now I'm just going to kind of look at my own palm and just going to kind of cut in some lines, you know, these don't have to be real deep, they're just supposed to be reminiscent of like some palm lines, with a slitting chisel, and like I said, they don't have to, they don't have to look real crazy, and you know, I've got all sorts of weird weird lines in my palm, but we'll just go kind of like that. And they don't all have to connect, but there you have it. So put myself some palm lines in there. We'll go ahead and get that heated up again. And now the secret is I'll come back in with the ball peen and I'll planish out some of them palm lines just a little bit to make them a little softer, a little more subdued, so to speak. Get this good and hot. And back in with the ball peen in the center of the hand. Again, work out your palm line areas. That way they don't look so pronounced. They look like they almost grew in there naturally, like your regular hand would have it. And just like that, you've got a hand with some palm lines in it, and it looks pretty good. So now we're going to curl this up and turn this into a pointer finger over at the horn of the anvil. Got it good and hot. Now, looking for my palm, I'm going to put my palm down. I'm going to start with my pinky and the ring finger and try to get those to curl with just the edge of the rawhide mallet. And then I'm going to take my middle finger. And for you jokesters out there, I know what you're already thinking. But this is a family channel. Keep it to yourself. So, now we're going to put that pointer finger out a little bit and we'll take another heat on this. This is going to take a few heats. It is very critical at this point in time. It's very critical at this point in time that you take your time with this. If you go, if you go too crazy with this, you can end up snapping something off. So take plenty of heats at this. And if I wasn't doing this for film, I would have just used a torch on this, by the way. It's a lot easier. We're just trying to get this natural kind of curve around for these fingers, you know? While having the pointer finger out at a natural juncture, and the thumb's got to curl around as well. And we'll go ahead and get it hot again. Now you guys can start seeing how this palms come together. Now you're starting to see how this fingers come together. So we're trying to go for a pointer finger like that with the closed palm. So 
So now that I've done most of my forming with the rawhide mallet and the horn, now I'm going to go back to using the little scrolling tongs. So it's going to make things a lot easier on me. Curl the fingers. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and curl the thumb down to make that kind of circular shape. I'm going to pry out my pointer finger a little more and hopefully get my pinky finger and ring finger to curl in a little bit. We want the middle finger and the thumb to come together much like you naturally would see them come together. Obviously we don't want our finger, pointer finger to look broke so keep it all in line. Keep it all in line fellas and ladies. Whoever's attempting this process Go ahead and brush this off real good. Alright, now you guys can see it starting to come along. We'll go ahead and get this heated up again. We'll give that pointer finger, we'll give that pinky finger a little more curve. Do it. I'll be right back with you. Alright, pretty much got this formed exactly how I'm looking to have it formed. Get my fingers arranged a little bit better. Get my wrist straightened out. I don't want this thing to have too much curve in the wrist. Get that straightened up. I'm going to center up the hand. that set up. Might come in here with a little bit of that rounding hammer. Clean up some of these edges. I don't like the rounding hammer that much, but for this type of work, it's perfect. Allows you to kind of clean up areas because it's got the right curve to work in here. So that's why I like it. And so there we go. Now we got our pointer finger. It looks pretty natural. It needs a little more curve in there, but I'll do that off camera. But now we got a finger that's kind of pointing. You don't want to try to make things too straight. Remember, a hand's not all too straight. It's just, you know, it's a representation of a pointer finger. So I hope that looks pretty good to y'all and we'll go over the workbench and we'll analyze this a little closer after I do just a little final tweaking. And here we are ladies and gentlemen this is the final piece. I just chose a big loop handle for it just something to hang it from uh, you know just kind of just doing a little something different there so this way it has a different feel than the rest of my fire pokers and stuff and uh, yeah here it is. So let me zoom you guys in just a little bit closer so you can see what's going on with the details. So there you are. I just want a very open thing with a pointer so this way I can point out different parts of a piece without burning these anymore. So now you guys will see these in all my future videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it that big thumbs up if you're still around. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, you may want to hit, take and hit that subscription tab and then crush that little jingly bell notification to get notified every time I release a video as I release three videos a day of content currently. Uh, we release three minutes at three, which is a business talk, and then two forging videos slash vlog videos a day. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, like I always say, God bless you and I'll catch you on the next one.